Welcome to another episode of The Arts of the Answer, a co-production of the Arts Council for Monterey County and Access Monterey Peninsula. I'm Steve Elsey, executive producer for AMP. And I'm Paulette Lynch, executive director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be talking with Sue Ann Hillier from Community Partnership for Youth and Nicole Garzino of the Center for Photographic Art. And you do not want to miss Monterey County Weekly journalist Walter Rice interviewing fabulous local artist Carol Chapman. Plus, we'll hear from Suzanne Burns of the Western Stage on how that organization has kept drama alive and exciting for the last 40 years. It starts right now. I'm with Sue Ann Hillier today, the Director of the Visual and Performing Arts Academy at Community Partnership for Youth. Sue Ann has been in our area for 13 years, working in various art programs in various ways throughout our wonderful region. Um, today she's going to tell us what's happening with the Academy and CPY, and I'm sure you're going to want to get involved. Thanks so much for coming, Sue Ann. Thanks for having me. So and let's start with what uh, is happening at the Visual and Arts Academy these days. What we do at CPY is um, we believe in working with the whole child. So um, what we do is we try to introduce the kids or we do introduce the kids to all the different mediums um, in the art world. So not only do they get visual art, but they also get performing art, drama, um, for two years in a row, we work with the Seaside Lions Club doing the International Peace um, Poster Contest, which was hooked in with the uh, United Nations. And they created posters based on um, peace, their idea of what peace was. And then there were winners. Um, so we had an exhibit of that at Oldemeyer Center for two years in a row. And then I also did an exhibit with our students at the Peace Center in Seaside. So that was really fun. So the kids do get to see their uh, work exhibited outside of just Community Partnership for Youth. And it's so wonderful to hear from their perspective what they are getting from the program. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe one or two of the kids who maybe were especially um, enriched by your interaction with them or by what they were doing that day? One is, this was uh, really exciting. I was having coffee at a coffee house one day, and this young woman walks up to me and she said, are you Miss Sue Ann? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to run into my students and they're in college now. I'm like, oops. But anyway, she, and I said, yeah, and I recognize her. I couldn't remember her name, but she said, you know, I just want to tell you that um, I am going to, I think it's Cal Arts this year and she said um, I'm studying to be an actor and I was influenced and inspired by the work that we did at CPY when you did art with us so I was really flattered I was like wow you know so there was another thing uh, that happened one time when I was working with um, children and we were doing a visual arts project which at the moment I cannot really remember what it was it might have been the peace contest actually and one of the little girls was really struggling and I and I said and she said oh Miss Wayne I, I can't do this I can't do this but I could tell something was bothering her and so I said well you know what why don't you just forget that part of it and just do what you're feeling right now. Just, just, you know, just paint or draw or do whatever you are feeling right at this moment. Well, it turned out she was having, or she wasn't having, but her family were, was having some really major problems. And her father and mother were fighting a lot. And so she drew this picture of her father giving her mother flowers. Yeah. So, and, and through that, she was able to kind of process what was going on with her um, at home. And so for me, and for CPY, it's really important that we allow the children to express themselves. You know, so for, it's not about creating artists, although if they become artists, like this one girl, an actor, I'm like, yay. But really, it's more about learning how to be self-expressive, um, you know, gaining confidence enough to be able to talk about what's going on with them. Um, and they also learn, um, you know, teamwork and collaboration and lots of things they can take into the community and their school, you know, academically um, through working 
in the arts. I'm sure there's a lot of people right now who are thinking, I, I'm ready, I really want to be involved. What, what can they do and how do they get connected? As far as what, can, what they can do in the program, we have so many things. We do have obviously the Art Academy, which is really important, but we also have um, people that come in and do reading and tutoring and all that sort of stuff, or help with special projects. So the easiest way to do that would be to go directly to our website. Um, and we have, there's a donation button there, or there's a contact us button. Um, so either way, um, there's also a phone number, I believe, so that you can either call us or you know email us or like us on Facebook. We now have a Facebook page, so um, we're modern. <laughs> um, so any one of those ways would be a really um, would be the fastest way to get to us. Well, Sue Ann, it's just been so wonderful to talk to you today, and I really admire everything that you're doing at CPY for our whole community. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having you. me. I'm talking now with Nicole Garzino from the Center for Photographic Art. And it's really, really thrilling to have her here exploring what is happening at the Center. They have a wonderful history, but they are always moving forward. Nicole, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about how you all uh, figure out what to have uh, on exhibition and how do you decide what's your next exhibition going to be? We look at the whole year, we look at what's out there now, what people locally are doing, what is groundbreaking elsewhere, and, and just try to make sure we have a diverse calendar all year long. Well, that sounds pretty tricky, but how, how is it for you? It must be just thrilling to have people come into your space, enjoying what you're presenting. We get so excited by those. We love openings because, not just because it's an opportunity for people to see the work, but CPA is a community. Yeah. Not only are we our membership organization, we are more than that. We're bigger than that. We are this community of photographers and art lovers, people who don't, aren't interested in taking photographs but love to see what's going on. Yeah. And those just people who live here in the community and want to be part of that group. Mm -hmm. So the openings are where that all comes together. So I understand this is actually a special year coming up. And we're still planning it. It's our 25th anniversary. 25th anniversary, right, and we're still planning the festivities that will happen later in October. Mm -hmm. Now, CPA has been Center for Photographic Art for 25 years. Before, thank you, <laughs> thank you, and we're built on the traditions of the organization Friends of Photography, who was there before us, mm -hmm. and in fact, they were even in the same office in the same gallery as we are, and that organization was founded by Ansel Adams and Cole Weston and several of their contemporaries at the time to be a center, not, not just a gallery, but a, an organization built on the idea of mentorship yeah. and supporting a photography community, helping other people discover their own photographic artistic path, as it were, or if they weren't photographers, how to appreciate others' photography. Mm -hmm. And it was very accessible. Again, I'm using that word. Ansel was there. You know, he was teaching people. Yeah. Right behind my office wall in our little kitchenette, he taught darkroom classes. Yeah. So our space is historic in itself. Um, unfortunately, after he passed away and the organization dissolved, and the local photography community that was still here believed that this was very, very important mm -hmm. to this region. Photography was key to part of that, that artistic heritage of Carmel, Monterey, Point Lobos, mm -hmm. Big Sur. So they banded together and said, we are going to continue this. And that's when CPA was founded. So we're celebrating that now. We've been around for 25 years. I know you, you're founded on this wonderful history, but that you're always moving, moving ahead in your mind. New techniques, new ideas, new images, and, and younger people, mentoring those younger people, bringing them in. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing in that way as you, as you move ahead in the next few years, some of the things that we can look forward to. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the Friends of Photography was founded on the tradition of mentorship. And what CPA is doing is continuing those traditions. And that is very, very important to us that we, we're not just an exhibiting organization. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, we have um, a schedule of classes and workshops. Some are one-day workshops. Some are three-day. We have a wonderful each fall, early November, we have exposure weekend or weekend workshops. And that's an intensive Friday night through Sunday where people can come and take mini workshops all day long, photo walks, tours to Point Lobos, Big Sur, meet and mingle with some of these photographers I, I'm talking about, hear a keynote speaker, network with other photographers. So we're always doing that. For instance, we have coming up in June a workshop taught by Dan Estbrook and Holly Roberts that um, they're two fabulous artists that we're also exhibiting in June and through the summer into August, but they both do very, very creative work. They, Holly, for instance, does collage, oh, great. Yeah. incorporates photography. Uh -huh. So she's not a straight photographer, she is doing this really creative hands-on. She and Dan both believe that sometimes we miss that hands-on because of <laughs> yeah. the digital. Sure. So they, they're teaching this class together that get people back into the workshop, as it were, you know, to really um, work with whatever they're printing on the surfaces and touch it and feel it. And they, they feel actually that you put your handprint on that, that you're giving something to the art. Now, as far as you also mentioned younger audiences, one thing we do immediately right now is, is for those classes and workshops that already exist, that we have in our schedule, we do offer some scholarships mm -hmm. to high school students so that they can go 100% no cost. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then discounted and other options for college students or even teachers. And the best place to always find out about our workshops is on our website. Mm -hmm. We also ha just do a monthly e-blast newsletter that people can sign up for. It's a, it's a wonderful program that you have, and uh, we look forward to seeing more about your 25th anniversary specials and everything else you have coming up. So thank you, Nicole, for being here, and thank you for your leadership. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. My name is Walter Rice. I'm the arts, culture, and entertainment writer at the Monterey County Weekly. And I'm here with our special guest artist, Carol Chapman. Uh, Carol's been doing art since she was seven years old in Kansas City and has, over the years, um, progressed in a number of different mediums um, with over a versatility of subjects and uh, found her way to the Mon Monterey County in 1979. And I'm really happy to have you here, Carol. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Walter. I want to go back to um, your childhood in which you were first immersed in art in your um, hometown of Kansas City. Right, well, I was just very, very lucky to be raised, to have been raised in Kansas City. It's, uh, of course, it's a great family town, but it's a wonderful cultural town. There's just so much going on there and in the arts. And one of the reasons is, is it's the, the presence of Hallmark um, cards is there. And so you have an abundance of very excited people uh, creating all the time. And I knew a lot of those people. I grew up with a lot of those people and their children. But I would also go to the Kansas City Art Institute, which was, and I really was going there at age seven, and in the summers for four or five, six hours a day, just to draw. And this wasn't the cute little gallery things that, mm, that are frequently done just for children, just to amuse them. This was, this was pretty serious stuff. And I loved it. I just loved it. Were you encouraged by your parents or your family? I was very lucky. Both my parents loved the arts, and my father was a journalist, and uh, we were raised kind of in that kind of an atmosphere. Um, when he was in the service in World War II, uh, we moved around a lot. Um, and everywhere we'd go, the first thing my mother would do is find uh, the local museum, if we were in a small town. Um, when we ended up in Washington, uh, it was like we hit the jackpot because <laughs> there were the wonderful museums there. <laughs> and um, that would be our Saturday treat. You had um, a tragedy occur in your family, but it, it seems that in a sense you kind of, art helped you to 
get through that. I was married to uh, Bill Chapman, and he died tragically of a heart disease when he was 38. It was sudden and it was bad, and it was, uh, you know, just knocked us all off the map, as it would do any family. And um, it financially, of course, it it left us without a thing. So everybody wondered now, oh my God, what is she going to do? I mean, well, I, I, I never hesitate. I didn't miss a beat. And it, I've always painted. I've always had a studio. I've always had a studio at the house or some other place in town. You know, this is exactly what I'll do. And it was my salvation. Um, and I was doing a lot of portrait work at the time. Um, I was traveling various places in the country, and I was then commissioned to do some portraits out here on the West Coast. And that's what brought me to the West Coast. And I thought, this is, this is my reward. <laughs> and I'd always loved the seashore because as a child we were always, we generally we'd go to Cape Cod. So this, this just happened and it worked. At about the time that this happened, um, you also um, gained the first of um, your f fame or attention for? Um, in 1980, there, the Jocelyn Art Museum in Omaha, which is a fabulous museum, puts on a, uh, uh, there's, they were having their 16th annual biennial, and it encompassed 15 states. Uh, they had 1,500 entries. And uh, somebody said to me, you have, you know, you're never going to be any place if you don't have a resume going. <laughs> it never occurred to me to have one. So I, I uh, painted a painting called the Carlton Chairs, Khan, and I submitted it along with another one called Peninsula Pear of two yellow chairs. Uh, I call it Peninsula Pear because it's named after my dear friend Susie and Rye Smith, and they're the only couple I knew who are still married. So I thought, no, this is good. And anyway, I submitted three paintings, and they were all three uh, chosen to be in the show. And the Carlton Chairs was the cover piece for the show. And I found this out when it arrived in the mail. <laughs> and I thought, my gosh, this is, this is unbelievable. So I went up to receive my award. I flew up from Kansas City, and uh, this lovely man came up to me, Jan Vandermark. Uh, Jan was a sole juror of that show, and he was also the founder of the Chicago Museum of Contemporary Art, and he'd been head of the Walker Museum in Minneapolis, a wonderful man. And he said, You've, I've got to talk to you about this painting. He said, this. I said, okay, and we're looking at the painting, and he said, the sand moves. And I said, yeah, that's nice. And he said, and your colors are, are perfect, and it has a little bit of Bonnard, it has some Renoir. And you know, I was about ready to faint, and then he said, but ultimately, it has the cleanness of Matisse. Well, you know, I wanted to kiss him. <laughs> so that was too much. And um, I, I really needed that encouragement um, because I was at a low point in my life, and I thought, just how am I going to do this? And he gave me the secret. He took me to lunch the next day, and he said, you know, you'll never be able to paint fast enough. So this is what I advise you to do. You're living in Kansas City where you have a magnificent art institute. It's one of the finest printmaking facilities in the United States. He said, you go learn how to do that and start doing serographs or silk screens. Uh, it's a tedious process, but he said, that is what you must do. Your work is perfect for this. So <laughs> I did exactly what he said, and those serographs have gone all over the world now. Um, and as a result, uh, I was picked up by Christie's contemporary art later on, and they did take me to 
Tokyo and London and Paris. So that was nice. Yeah. You've sought a lot of versatility and variety in your mediums and also in your subjects. For instance, the um, um, portraits. Mm -hmm. And like Cynthia, as you mentioned earlier. Right. There? Yes. I did Cynthia's, um, the, it's a back and a front of Cynthia. It's a big painting, two, two big paintings. And um, I love those paintings. Um, and Cynthia now has them. In fact, a man bought those, which helped pay her tuition one year. And a few years later, he called me and said, you know, Carol, if you ever want those paintings back, you can buy them or trade me out or anything, because I know you want them. And so uh, that is exactly what I did. I traded. <laughs> I traded back. I got them back, and I gave them to Cynthia as a gift later for her 25th birthday, which was pretty exciting. But when I did those portraits, um, you'll also see I've done, uh, I branched out to different mediums, although I would do some in oil, some in pastel. Then I thought one day, what if the two Cynthias were cut out and they could just sit there on the floor with me? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? And I got my plumber to... Uh, I said to him one day, could you cut out, if I gave you a pattern, could you cut this out? He said, I think you're crazy, but sure, I, yeah, I can do that. So he did the first cut out for me, um, and it was kind of like a paper doll. And that was one of Margot and Melanie, who are my granddaughters, and uh, the big glasses on. And yeah, Chapman, he's my grandson, and that one, yes. Yeah. Another phase uh, that you explored, and, and it sounds like you returned to themes, nautical themes, or the ocean at least, um, Friday um, Harbor. Harbor. Yes. You talk about that series? Yes, I often get involved in series, as many artists do. Um, and I love Friday Harbor. It's a peaceful, heavenly place, and there's just a lot of material up there. So I've, I've also liked doing some of the structures. I think I got hooked on doing structures at that time. There's a boathouse and things like that, or there is also a big, the ferry boat even. I mean, just look at it as a structure. <laughs> You're, I, I believe, currently working in a new phase, one that sounds like really different from what you've explored before because it's um, urban uh, landscapes. Mm -hmm. The last place why you ever want to live is in a city. but. <laughs> <laughs> we were in New York, and I was looking around, and just suddenly it hit me, of these wonderful shapes of the buildings. Now, who knows? Did Mirandi really love all those bottles he painted? I mean, did, did uh, Monet really love all those haystacks? Who knows? They use them to compose with, <laughs> and that's, that was a catalyst. Those were the catalysts for, him, for these, those famous people artists and suddenly I saw these buildings to be absolutely marvelous uh, new vehicles for my expression. Um, uh, the composing the whole thing, it, to me it was just like doing a, oh I don't know, an abstract. To me it, they're kind of abstract shapes and I just love them. And then what, when I first started doing the horizontal ones of, of the buildings that you saw, yes. um, it, those came about because I was in my husband's workshop and I looked on the floor and there were these pieces of scrap board. And I said, hey, Fred, can I, <laughs> can I use those? And he said, what for? I said, well, just, just, just give me four of those, okay? He said, sure. I said, could you sand them too? And so he did. Anyway, and so those are painted on boards from his... Carol, you know. thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. My pleasure. It's very kind of you to have me. I am here in the studio with uh, the Young Company coordinator and director for the Western Stage, Suzanne Burns. Suzanne, welcome. Thank you. Now, there's a plethora of theater companies in Monterey County. How has the Western Stage just managed to really distinguish yourselves? 
Well, first and foremost, um, with their new works, uh, specifically the history of John Steinbeck, um, and because of the thriving work that we've done with John Steinbeck's work, we have received six NEA grants to support that. We also have um, wonderful theater professionals that come in to enhance our um, product. Now, Suzanne, in 2014, the Western Stage will be celebrating 40 years. Now, what has enabled you to succeed with all the competition and the recession economy? How have you managed to succeed? I don't think that there's any place that is more positive than the arts, um, bringing the youth to come to our young company um, after school program instead of out in the streets where um, there are gangs and violence. Come to the theater to create and explore. Um, there's proven fact that uh, the youth that go to the arts and do theater actually excel in school. Um, and the Western stage provides that because um, more and more the arts and education and arts in education is disappearing and that sets us apart. Suzanne, how important is the Western stage to the youth of the community? I think it's very important. Uh, the education that theater can give to the youth um, is um, unsurmountable. The, the, the children have a place to express themselves. Um, it's an outlet for them to create um, and to be themselves um, where, in a safe environment. We have a new season coming up. Tell us what we can expect in 2013. Well, I think it's a very exciting season, actually. We're starting um, with uh, Steinbeck, which um, it's been a couple years. So we are um, starting with Grapes of Wrath. Um, and, uh, and then we have a lovely piece, uh, Side by Side by Sondheim, a wonderful musical piece. Um, we are doing Luis Valdez's Zoot Suit. So already you're seeing John Steinbeck, Sondheim, Luis Valdez, very eclectic. Um, we are ending the season with a beautiful musical by a Gershwin, Crazy For You. Um, and we also have a show called um, Importance of Being Earnest, I'm sorry, uh, and um, Song of Our Father. Lovely, lovely pieces that um, are very diverse and different, and I think that will appeal to all people. If our viewers at home uh, want to know what you have in store for them and how they can buy tickets, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? The best way to get in touch with us is go to our website, which is um, www.westernstage.com. And on that website, there's everything, detailed information about all of our programs, um, our season, um, how to get tickets. Suzanne Burns, The Western Stage, Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed the program. And on future episodes, we would love to tell your story. So drop us a line at info at theartsaretheanswer.org. Maybe next month, we'll be telling our audience how you found out the, the arts, arts are, are the, the answer. answer. Thanks for watching.